Hello fellow sign lovers, now we are finally ready to take a look at the 10 genuine signs and on the triangular diagram where all of those signs are presented. There is a lot of ground to cover, so this first video is just a brief overlook on the 10 genuine signs. We go through them very briefly and I present some examples of every type of sign. In the next video we're going to take a closer look on the relations between the signs and a little bit on the logic how to read this diagram. But without further ado, let's make ourselves familiar with the 10 genuine signs. So as we learned in the previous video, there is only one possible quali sign in the 10 genuine signs. Then there were three possible sin signs and the rest six signs are all legis signs where the final three are symbolic ledger signs. Let's now inquire these signs individually. A sign of possibility is perceived to be similar to a possible object producing a possible emotional effect. Qualisign icon Rema is, so to say, the first sign. It is a sign of pure possibility. It is pure firstness. As we will see in the next video, this sign is involved in every other sign. As this sign is pure firstness, we cannot really perceive it as it is because there is no element of secondness in it. In other words, this sign does not exist. It cannot be confronted in our experience. However, it can be abstracted from every other sign. It is involved in every sign in the sense that every sign must have some quality in it. And this first sign is the quality in itself, a quality as a pure possibility, as pure firstness. But in order to understand it, we could conceive it as an immediate non-conscious feeling of some quality like sound, color, smell, taste or texture. As pure firstness, it is always original in itself. Personally, I think this sign more as a philosophical concept or doctrine than an actual sign. It is the element of firstness in the semiosis which brings novelty and chance into the semiosis continually. This qualisign prevents the semiosis from crystallizing to a deterministic action. So, in summary, the qualisign is the qualitative aspect, the quality that is involved in every possible kind of existent or a law. An individual sign is perceived to be similar to an existent object producing a possible emotional effect. The sin sign icon Rema is a sign that has materialized itself and it's perceived to represent the qualities of its object. It is something existent but in a sense, independent. It could be a sudden or unexpected sound or some other completely independent signal in itself. However, as it is an icon, it's not still perceived to be connected to anything. And as it is a rema, it does not convey any information. So it is just something independent, something as it is, something in itself. An individual sign is perceived to be connected to an existent object producing a possible emotional effect. Sin sign index rima is a sign that draws our attention to something which the sign is connected by an index. This sign is something that is existent and points us to perceive its object. For example, it could be a blinking sign that draws attention to it. However, being a rema, it does not convey any information about its object. As a rema, it does not produce any actual effect, but merely a kind of emotional state or possibility of information. It directs our attention to something, but does not tell anything about that object. It just points in the direction. An individual sign is perceived to be connected to an existent object, producing an actual energetic effect. Sin sign index sign is an existent sign that draws our attention to some object and conveys some information about it. 
it is the final shocking effect that some unexpected or sudden signal or perception causes in us. For example, if we hear a sudden strident sound, the final shocking effect is that we jump maybe backwards from the source of the sound. However, notice how in this stage there is no consciousness in these processes. They are mere reflexes or instincts. A habitual sign represents the qualities of its object producing a possible emotional effect. Before we dive into this sign, we should acknowledge that it is a legis sign. That means that this sign does not actually exist. It is not in itself a perceivable thing. The being of legis sign is the being of a habit, rule or law. It is a real living tendency that has the power to guide its instances in individual existent signs, that is, sin signs. So, in effect, we can only directly perceive sin signs which embody some qualities, that is, quali signs, and which may be instances of some law, rule or habit, that is, a legis sign. Now, back to this individual sign. The legis sign icon Rema is the rule, law or habit that dictates what kind of qualities the individual sign must embody in order to be counted as an instance of some law. For example, we have laws that dictate what kind of qualities bills must embody in order to be taken as a legal tender. These laws could be seen as legisign icon remas. Or there is the rule on what kind of sound quality the referee's whistle must embody in order to be counted as the legitimate whistle that can dictate about starting and stopping the game. That's why air horns don't cause any problems in games, because we immediately notice that that is not the sound quality that has the power to dictate about stopping and starting the game. Or we have the rule that traffic lights must embody certain colors, red, yellow and green, and not blue, for example. A habitual sign represents its object by being existentially connected to it, producing a possible emotional effect. Legisign index Rema is the rule that dictates how certain things should behave in certain kind of situations. It is the tendency or power that sign has, but because this sign is still a Rema, this power or tendency is still in the potential. For example, cash has the potential power to function as a means of exchange in concrete situations. Or the referee's whistle has the power to legislate about starting or stopping the game. Or the traffic light has the power to cause cars to stop when the light is red. Now notice how the previous sign was about the qualities what this sign must embody whereas this sign, being an index, is more about how this sign is connected to concrete situations, how these kinds of signs should behave, what the power assigned to the sign should be able to accomplish. However, the behavior or goal or purpose of this sign in action is still in the potential, as this sign is still a rema. A habitual sign represents its object by being existentially connected to it, producing an actual energetic effect. Legisign index digisign is the power of the rule, law or habit to actually cause habitual effects. Whereas the previous sign was still more or less power in potential, this sign is actual action or power in action, the actual effect that the sign habitually produces. For example, this is the power of money to actually cause an exchange of goods, or the referee's whistle to actually cause the players to stop playing the game, or the traffic light's power to actually stop the car, power to cause people actually to push the brake pedal. 
A habitual sign represents its object by a habit producing a possible emotional interpretation. Legisign symbol Rema is the first symbol. This has a number of meanings. First of all, this sign is not anymore directly connected to some situation, because it is not an index, but a symbol. Whereas the last three legisigns were about some power in concrete situations, for example, money's power to actually buy things in concrete situations, symbols are detached from these situations because their relation with the object is based on a habit and not on a concrete or causal relation. That's why symbols gain meaning across many different situations and contexts. So, for example, a single word or a term is a legisign symbol rema. For example, the word dog is one. It is a symbol because it does not refer to any concrete situation. The word dog could occur in many different kinds of contexts, whereas the referee's whistle has the power to legislate about starting a stop in the game only in the context of a game. The word dog is also a rema because it does not convey any actual information about its object. The simple word dog does not tell us anything about the dog. What's its color, its breed or size, for example. It is simply a vague statement, dog, and therefore it cannot be said to be true or false. It is a rema. Also, we should notice that now we enter the symbolic realm that is, as I said, detached from concrete situations. And concrete things can gain symbolic meaning. For example, although money is a very concrete thing, you can do very concrete things like buy stuff with it, it has also a symbolic meaning. Or the referee's whistle can also gain symbolic meaning. For example, we have the term whistleblower, which is a symbol. A habitual sign represents its object by a habit producing an actual energetic interpretation. Legisign symbol disassign is a symbol that tells us something about the world. It is a proposition or a sentence. When we unite words, that is, legisign symbol remas, we can form propositions, that is, legisign symbol disassigns. For example, the proposition dog is a mammal is a factual statement that can be either true or false, that is, a disassign. When you go to a museum and read a sign that is next to a painting and you understand it, this would be an instance of a legisign symbol disassign. It is a symbolic sign that can convey factual information about its object. Furthermore, the things that gain symbolic meaning, like money, can now be united with other terms to form propositions, like time is money or money is power. Both of these propositions are logisign symbol disassigns. A habitual sign represents its object by a habit producing a general logical interpretation. Legisign symbol argument is again more of a philosophical concept than an actual sign that we could confront in our experience. In the same way we combine terms to form a proposition, we can combine propositions to form an argument. But if we think about this sign as a more of a philosophical concept, it would be the concept of teleological growth and development. Everything that happens, happens according to these larger processes and purposes and tendencies. So the argument is the super habit or super order towards which the reality tends to grow. Something we should definitely talk more about. So that was the quick rundown of the 10 genuine signs. In the next video we're going to take a closer look on the diagram and how we should read it. But until then, good sign hunting. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing these videos with your friends.